Good day creative friends, I hope you're doing well. So the title of this video is not clickbait, it is literally the easiest and fastest Christmas cards that I've ever done. They can also be used as Christmas tags because the images are super small. So I started out by cutting a piece of a 6x9 watercolor paper in half and then I divided that piece into four equal sections. And then I mask off each of these sections with pro artist tape. So I use the thick one in the middle, which is a half inch. And then around the edges, I use the quarter of an inch. And this will give me an even a quarter inch border all around the images when I am done uh, painting and I cut them apart. Now, I do get this question quite often. How do you center the tape in the middle? When I measure each of the sections, I use a pencil to trace the dividing lines and I make sure that the, the lines are visible. I press hard enough on the pencil. You can always erase them afterwards. And that way when I'm using, when I'm positioning the tape over this line, I can see through it. I can see through the tape because, because it's not 100% opaque. So if my line is dark enough, I can see it and then I can just eyeball it and position it. Even if I make a mistake, the tape is not burnished yet and it's not that super tacky so I can still reposition it without damaging the paper. And then once everything is done, then I burnish it with my bone folder and I make sure that, especially the corners, like where two tapes meet, that the tape is really stuck down. So I just press hard enough on the bone folder now that we've done all the prep, it's time to paint, the fun part. So for the background, I'm using Thedo Cyanine Turquoise, which I've diluted quite a bit with water. And that's going to be the sky. And the snow is going to be left white at first. And what I do is I just did kind of like a wavy line all across the top two sections. And then the bottom as well with my brush. I uh, painted it from that line up to the edge and then once I was done I added silver metallic paint to the snow to the bottom part which is the snow just to make it more fun more glittery and I decided also to darken the two bottom images just just for fun just to give me something different to play with the trees are done all with the same brush, a number two round, and here comes the super easy part. I am just making blobs. I'm, I kid you not, these are blobs. Um, they're not even, they're blobs. <laughs> as long as you contain them in a triangular formation as much as possible, it's, and it's not an exact triangle, because trees are not proportioned. Um, you're good to go. And I used two greens just for interest. So I'm using green gold and perylene green. And so the tree on the left hand side is more of a fuller tree. And the one on the right, I'm using flicking motions, um, tinier blobs. And that way you can see a little bit of the sky shining through the flickers <laughs> they're not leaves I don't know how to call them uh needles I guess a, a Christmas tree a, oh, a Christmas tree has needles right yeah I think so just like a pine and again I'm using the two different greens uh, as you can see on the right I was not so successful with the flicking and that's fine because in the end once I'm done adding the baubles and the glitter nobody will notice. The first tree I'm painting at the bottom is somewhat, it turns out to be almost the same as the first two, but it's a different process. I'm just creating misshapen scallops <laughs> with my brush. Um, and then also using the same green, the perylene green to divide the layers and to add a bit of shading. The one on the left uh, was a total experiment and in hindsight I did not have to mask with tissue. <laughs> you can use paper, I think it would have been the best option, but I thought, oh, why don't I flicker little dots or 
uh, yeah, I guess like her little dots instead of painting them in. But it was kind of like hard to control, messy. And I thought, no, nah, I'm just going to paint them in. So I'm adding both greens like this. And then I gave up <laughs> because it was getting everywhere on my desk and it drove me nuts. So at least I have somewhat of a triangular shape to work with. And then I'm just going to fill the tree in with larger dots um, with both greens. And then eventually I'm going to add red to all of the trees. So I wanted to add uh, an ornament at the top, uh, more like a star, and I'm using a silver glitter pen for that. Just doing a, an asterisk, I guess, shape. I'm not very good at that, and the pen, the pen tip is quite thick, <laughs> so uh, it was a bit tricky, but doable. Um, I just didn't have the patience to apply myself. Um, I'm filming this very late. <laughs> True to nature, I'm last minute, not because I chose to be. Um, it just turned out that way. But um, I'm using also this glitter pen to add more baubles in the tree. Um, and then the trees at the bottom, because they have a darker background, I'm going to use a Posca white paint pen to do the tree topper. And you're going to see the one on the left is, is quite misshapen, <laughs> but it's okay. It goes with the tree. It's the one with the dots all over the place, so it's fine.
Before I removed the tape, I went around inside each of the images and added a tiny border with this sepia copic marker. It gave it that nice vintage look and it was a good delimiter, especially for this snow. Before removing the tape, make sure that you heat set the tape with a heat tool. It does minimize the risk of lifting the paper, especially if you're using cotton watercolor paper. It's quite fragile and quite honestly, any tape that I have used in the past have always has always damaged my paper. So by heat setting it, you are softening up the glue and there's less chance of the paper lifting. And when I glue down my watercolor pieces, that's another question I get often. I use this ATG gun with a two-way adhesive and I am very generous with the glue. I make sure that all around I have tape and also in the middle. So um, I get this question quite often. <laughs> um, so yes, I've lined up each of the images with craft paper and then I'm gluing them onto the card base. And I turned one of the images into a cute little gift tag because I think the size of these images lend themselves really well for uh, different uses. You can also make uh, table placeholders. I think that would be uh, the perfect size for them. So that's it. That is my quick and easy Christmas cards. I honestly have not made this easier, these easiest cards. <laughs> these are the easiest cards I've ever made. I'm not lying. <laughs> and they're quick too. So I hope you'll give it a try. Anybody can do those. Uh, let me know how they turned out. Let me know if you are using a different color combo. These could be in any colors. Uh, let's not always have a traditional Christmas. <laughs> let's think outside of the box. So thank you so very much for watching. I want to say a huge thank you also to my awesome patrons for supporting my art over at Patreon. As usual, stay healthy, happy, creative, and I will see you soon.